You are listening to the Lesbian Review Podcast, a podcast spin-off of the popular review website, thelesbianreview.com. I'm Sheena, and I've been joined today by April, one of the fellow reviewers. <laughs> April came up with this fabulous suggestion of the 10 butch women that we fell for. You see, April is particularly partial to the butch in fiction, yes. and I can't blame her. They're just so yummy. So April, why this topic? Well, I chose this topic because I am just one of those lesbians who is actually lucky to love butch women. I love them. I love their energy, their vibe. I just love the unique talents and perspectives that butch women bring to lesbic, you know? They have their own style and they blend in so well, whether it's femme and femme, butch and butch, they just, they just make the story lovely. I don't care. They have it really lovely. I think that's I, it. I really adore them. <laughs> it's actually well said because butch characters do indeed bring a different dynamic to any story. And I'd love to see more butch women represented in lesbian fiction. So today we are talking about 10 that we particularly love. And how this podcast works is first I'm going to talk about my first selection. I'm going to read the synopsis from the book, chat a little bit about it, and then April will discuss her first choice. And we'll alternate until we've gone through the entire list. All the books we chat about today are in the show notes, including buy links. And you can support us by using the buy links, because when you do, we get a couple of cents from Amazon as affiliates. Alright, so my very first choice is Yvonne from Valley of the Dead by Crystal M. Romero. Yvonne is one of the kick arsest lesbian women in that I've ever read about. She saves all her friends from the zombie apocalypse, and then she drives everybody to safety. It's It's just... She's such a fabulous character. And what I love particularly about her is that she's a black leading lady, also something we don't necessarily see enough of in lesbian fiction. Okay, so the synopsis goes like so. Gay Pride Weekend this year was bound to go down in history because of the nation's advances in equality. Across California's Silicon Valley, couples gathered for numerous weddings and people showed their pride at a downtown park. Even the usual religious protesters failed to ruin the celebration. Unfortunately, History would not remember this as the day of celebrating equality, but as the day the zombies overran the world. Revelry quickly turned to chaos as the crowds fought for their lives. Yvonne Martin just wanted to relax at home this year, but a frantic call from her best friend sent her on a terrifying mission to save him. Along the way, they are thrown together with Captain Jacqueline Rhodes and her partner, the last surviving officers of the police force. Together with some of the neighbours, they must make their escape. From the Valley of the Dead. Sounds like something I need to read. <laughs> you definitely do. It's such a fabulous book. Well, I could agree with you. I, if there's one person I know I could depend on for a good mystery or thriller, I know it's going to be you. <laughs> okay, so what's your? Who's your first one? My first one is going to be Jameson Reed and Hango Fletcher, right? Bo- that's the lovely couple I want to be. But Jameson Reed is the butch woman that I adore from the design series by Jamie Ansh, right? Because she's an architect. Jameson Reed is such a lovely character. I just love how Jameson Reed actually embraces the whole family lifestyle. I mean, you come and you've got a whole family just like that. You you came to get the girl. You got her, you got kids, and then you ended up getting grandkids too. So you've got a whole family just by saying I do to this woman, this senator. She comes with a lot because, I mean, I wonder how Jameson felt like, okay, this lady, senator, right, I marry her, I get her, do the whole house, the dog, the everything, and hey, I got a family, a pseudo family on the side. So she fit right in, and I just love the way she merges family life with her professional life. She does it so well. I think, hey, I would have married her if she were real and in this country right now with me. Uh, she sounds amazing and this is a series that i have heard people rave about yeah you're missing out the design series is awesome it's 10 books in this series that whole design series starting with the first one by design and then it ends with election day so 10 books can't go wrong and all the books are less than five dollars you can't go wrong oh fantastic that's a good deal yeah Yeah, a very good deal 10 books (laughs) Story engaging from start to finish. And you'll see Jameson and Candace go as a couple throughout the whole series. So it's no two books are alike. You'll never be bored. There's one thing I can promise you. 
Oh, very nice. That is something I find with series books, especially when they get particularly long, as characters can often become repetitive. It's nice that you manage to keep it fresh. Yep, and there are four new scenario situations. There's a lot of learning and character growth within each book. So, you're really getting a good series there. Jay Armstrong is coming out with even another series, and I can't wait to read that one too, because Butch Femme Sight is another Butch Femme couple coming out, so I'm looking forward to that for 2018 when that series hits as well. Not that you're a fangirl or anything, huh? <laughs> oh, no, I'm not fangirling. I'm just here on the side, quiet, you know, just here admiring the Butch Femme. You know, I'm, I'm behaving myself really well. I'm not drooling over them. I'm not there giving them a long gaze and wolf whistling inappropriately, you know? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so my next my next character is Zane from Soulmates by K.A. Mole. K.A. Mole herself is a butch woman, and so I think her representation of butch woman in fiction is spot on. It's the kind of woman which I think baby butchers should aspire to be like. Okay, so... Do you believe in soulmates? Do you believe that some way there's a person who makes you whole? If you ran into each other at a coffee shop or on the street, would you know her? Would you have the courage to put yourself out there to risk it all for love? Zane was sexually assaulted just days before her high school graduation, targeted because she was a lesbian. The horrific nature of that violation has left her unable to engage in intimate relationships. They were bullies as far as she was concerned. They destroyed her life. When Jaina's mother was incarcerated, she and her brother were placed in foster care. The years spent lingering in the system have left her battling lifelong issues of abandonment. Jaina trusts no one enough to risk being hurt again. Sex is fine, but relationships are out of the question. When circumstances result in Jaina embarking on a search for her bio family, her path will cross with Zane's. Both recognize the other as a soulmate. But will their love be strong enough to overcome a lifetime of baggage? Aww. that sounds like a lovely read. <laughs> I'm sure our listeners would love to go and try out this book too. There is a graphic sexual assault in it, so just bear that in mind. But having said that, it's a really good representation of people and their ability to overcome a bad situation. Oh, all right. Because that's the thing. Once you have a story with a... Not just a happily ever after, but you're showing the characters overcoming something. And it's, it makes it more realistic, you know, when somebody actually has to go through something and overcome. People could read this and say, hey, me too, you know, happened to me too. And look, it's been recognized here. I feel validated. My thoughts are portrayed here. Mm-hmm. I could read more from this writer. I think it's a great selection. Well, K.A. Moll was in her previous life if you like a psychologist and she worked for I'm gonna I don't want to get this wrong but she worked for the people who like family services right so it's more like social work she deals with people who went through trauma and whatnot so yeah that's cool because I admire people like that who have professions especially health and professions not just medical alone but to be able to take on someone else's problem and help soothe them and walk them through it wow that's that is amazing. Good Absolutely. And so she's got a really good understanding of what people who've gone through this kind of trauma go through. And so her books are extremely well researched from that point of view. You won't find another author in the Les Fix sector who's as good at this particular type of storytelling as she is. I too, I'm going to be there getting my hand on that book. <laughs> Not just you. <laughs> right, so my second choice now, my second choice will be Sky Kenny. From the, from the book written by, oh my God, I love this author, Jessica L. Webb, Repercussions. I love this book. It is amazing. Please, people, don't bear with me while I fangirl over her, but I just love Jessica L. Webb's books. They are amazing. And I would not leave you wrong. Repercussions is a one of a kind book because it deals with the mind. It deals with memory and what you can hide in memory embedded in your brain. I mean, this is like science mixed with thriller, mixed with mystery, everything combined. 
can get better. And I know um, Kai from Women Think she's hot in Africa. This is um, Gushing Again. She's a former Sarabia computer geek as well. Another kind of woman who has my heart. I love my computer geek. A military woman in uniform. I love her. Yep. So I just can't help crushing over Sky Kenny. She's a silent type, but she held Evie Black, right? She she had a crush on her because at the beginning Evie Black was had a head injury and she was going to get counseling and therapy for her head injury. And Evie Black stumbled upon Sky Kenny in the kitchen. Imagine coffee brought them together making coffee upstairs while Sky Kenny was going to attend a meeting now for Sarabia with post traumatic stress disorder. And that they mixed up in such a lovely way. A date began after the meetings and everything. They went up to Sky's loft. They saw the house, everything, and she saw all these gadgets, these computers, and it just wowed Evie. And the only thing that Evie kind of, I can't say she regretted, she just was sad to know that Sky had to be her protector, you know? She wants to date this girl, and I don't give her wrong because I want to date her too, but she wants to date this girl. And here it is, her, the one she wants to date has to be the one to protect her, but in order to protect Evie, Sky had to be impartial and pull back her romantic feelings. And that was kind of sad, but it worked out in the end because I think Sky did the best she could to distance between them so she could better protect her and not just react. She will act on any threat, but she wouldn't just react out of fear for someone she loves. So the closer you are to a situation, the harder it is when you have to protect someone and take certain decisions to protect them. And I admire that about Sky Kenny. So she used her training as a soldier and what she has learned in the military to do what she does. She has a whole online thing, the chat room going. Hey, Ross, I have to wink, wink and throw out ideas there. She has yet to make little people like us out and have those things up and running too. I can't say what who. What do you think? <laughs> well, I loved the, the book. I just finished listening to it on audiobook. It was amazing. And um, I absolutely understand why you think Sky Kenny is the bee's knees. And I think the virtual reality meetings that they had was amazing. I think Jessica L. Webb is fast becoming one of my favorite authors. This is the second book of hers that I've listened to now. And um, she is fantastic. Also very unique in the sector. She gives us really exciting stories with a, a, a nerdy twist, which just <laughs> excite me, you know. Absolutely, absolutely. Yes. Smart women always do it for me. Oh, yes, they do. And when I put on my glasses while I'm at work, I get those looks like, yay, bro, ha, let me make glasses be rock. <laughs> so, ladies with the spectacles out there, just know, we rock. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> yes. Okay, so my next pick is Jessie Forbes from Innocent Hearts by Radcliffe. Jessie's essentially a cowgirl. Radcliffe writes these these kind of butch characters that are light butchers, if you like. They're not the typical kind of tuxedo butchers, but they're, they're lighter butchers. Jessie is a very butch butch, and that's why I particularly like her for this list. In 1860s Montana Territory, Kate Beecher, a young woman from Boston, faces the hardships and hard choices of life on the frontier. Just 18 and quietly struggling against social constraints of the era, Kate meets a woman who fires first her imagination and then her dreams. Jessie Forbes, a fiercely independent rancher, finds in Kate the passion she never knew she had been missing. This is a story of their struggle to love in a land and time as cruel as it was beautiful. And it's, it's everything I love about Radcliffe. It's angsty, it's dramatic, it's well-researched, it's beautifully written, it's a brilliant book. was promising her next that followed up and that was a really good read i enjoyed that <laughs> how girls will make it on these lists for women that i like too <laughs> ah, see, see i'm misbehaving on this call and you guys know it <laughs> <laughs> since when do you behave april is my question mm, never <laughs> <laughs> see this is why we get on so well see you agree with me i do <laughs> 
Okay, what's your next one? My next one will be telling you about another crush of mine. I had to choose you and be in my book, Seeing Casey from the Devil series by Ari Vari. So, Seeing Casey, I have a Casey from my left kidney too. Right. This is your lady. I just love her. And my gosh, this is it. She's an awesome mother. She is an awesome mother. I just adore the way her children just take care of them and the love that she has for them. And she's also very forgiving because she forgave Emma for what she did, you know. She left her and all that. She betrayed her engaged and talked about a lot. And I was kind of pissed at Emma for that. But, you know, they got back together. So I have to backtrack because I'm just a lady on the side here loving them. I can't really get in there. I'm not the real wife. So seeing Casey's a kind boss as well as an excellent mom. And hell yeah, she actually brings in that booze right under everybody's eyes and nose and ears. And they don't even know when she's doing it. But this series, oh my god, this series is amazing. And then there's a new edition coming out next month called Heart of the Devil. If anyone's interested, that's actually the prequel to the whole Devil series, even though it's coming after. But her books are just amazing. It's a five-book series. You can't go wrong. But the first time I read, you know, The Devil Inside, at the beginning, I was kind of like, okay, is this Casey? I'm not sure if I love her yet or I hate her. And then I ended up loving her, absolutely adoring her and falling head over heels for the way how she just did everything. And she always pulls in the wise thing in with whatever she's doing. And she is merciless when it comes to protecting her family. And I just love the description of her. Oh my God, that blue eye, dark hair, <laughs> and that devilish glint in her eyes. Yeah, don't worry, I'll keep her out of jail. I'll do her taxes. I'll keep her out of jail and make it look legit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Yes, yeah. uh, I agree with Ken Casey. I, th- I had the exact same thing. I wasn't sure at first, but she is an excellent mother. She is smarter than smart. I love her problem solving. I love how she gets around the cops. And and but at the same time, she's a she's a bad guy with morals. She refuses to to embark on the sex trade. She, or the drug trade, and, you know, good for her. She just keeps it at whiskey, you know? And who doesn't love alcohol? Who doesn't love a good sip of alcohol at night? So she's not really harming anyone. And for that, I'm grateful for. Because I'm glad she's not, as you said, dealing with any drugs or any sex trade. She just keeps it to the liquor, and that's it. And I admire her for that. (laughs) Absolutely agree. Good choice. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so my next choice is Talon. From Sword of the Guardian by Mary Shannon. Talon is a woman who's pretending to be a man. And this is one of my absolutely favorite tropes in Lesvik. Not because I think women want to be men or anything, but because there's inevitably the discovery. So the, the more femme one generally discovers that the other one is, is actually not a man. And... <laughs> That situation is just too fabulous. But Talon is just... Ah, oh, Talon is too adorable. Okay. A shocking assassination creates an unconventional bond between a princess and her guardian in a kingdom filled with political intrigue, danger, and unexpected romance. Princess Shasta enjoys a pampered life of court dances, elaborate finery, and the occasional secret fencing match with her twin brother, Derek. But in the midst of a birthday celebration... Her world shatters when a mysterious assassin takes her brother's life. Shasta, the only remaining heir to the throne, narrowly escapes the assassin's blade thanks to the intervention of a travelling acrobat named Talon. With the threat of another attempt on Shasta's life imminent, her father declares that the young hero will become the princess's bodyguard. But what Shasta doesn't know is that her new guardian has a well-kept secret. He is actually a she. Talon and Shasta soon grow closer than anyone, especially her father, could have predicted. Will the truth of her guardian secrets change their relationship forever? It's a great book. It's a fantasy, fantasy novel, so there's like sword fights, and Talon is an acrobat, so she does the most amazing things physically. Um, and there's a lot of sexual tension, which is great fun. That's going to keep anybody hooked. Absolutely. Okay, so what is your almost last one? All right, my almost last one will be Kate Delapeel from Amateur City by Catherine D. Forrest. 
Now, kids, well, if you is a dynamic learner, this is a dynamic dish learner, and I am sure Catherine G. Forrest for writing such moving, touching, and adventurous stories in that era when she was writing. Because, I mean, in the 90s, 80s, writing less is, is totally different from now. Everything is out there. Everyone knows about it. But she wrote books like Daughters of, of a Coral Dawn at that time, you know, at a time when people wanted to dress women. And now you are writing a book about a butch lesbian named Kate Delafield in the police service when there weren't many police officers who were women, one, and two, out lesbians, out butch lesbians, because at that time that wasn't prevalent. And this lady, as her Kate Delafield was described, with short hair, dressing like a man, you know, moving like a man. And in the book they described her as that dyke. Because from the time they spot her, they know she's a lesbian. From the time someone looks at her, they know. And for someone to look at her and just know, which means the manner she carried herself, the charisma she had as a butch lesbian, and they do have a charisma, yeah? You, and you could just tell. I am just amazed at the way Catherine G. Forrest wrote about Kate Delafield and her street smart and quick wit. And I admired how she spelled the Kate. Because Kate Delafield had to investigate this murder at the office and she had to pick up with this lady called Ellen O'Neill. It was her first day at work, you know. Imagine her first day at work. You were busy with and invited into this firm, okay. You start a work, you start to make coffee and all of a sudden there's a screen, there's breaking glass and someone running. By the time you get out of the kitchen and see the perpetrator just gone in your face, looking back, you never saw his face. And now, are you still going to go back to work there tomorrow? Are you going to go there tomorrow? Because I know I won't, but o Ellen O'Neill did. And actually, the second day she came to work, she met up with Kate Delafield. And Kate Delafield handled this so well. Even though she interviewed everyone, she still had this thing for Ellen O'Neill. And Ellen O'Neill, by the way, is a closeted fan lesbian who was living with a professor. But the professor didn't want anyone to know that, you know, Ellen and him together. So they kept it secret and hush-hush. And she went away doing work for the foundation and her school and all of that and left Ellen there, you know. And Kate and Ellen came together and got closer while the investigation was going on. But I liked how Kate handled that whole situation. She didn't make any big promises. It was no woman gets another woman home and runs off into the sunset. She just handled it so well that she actually let her know, hey, I'm not promising you forever, but I can promise to give you what I have right now, which is just me, you know, and I can protect you for however long you want me to, you know, kind of thing. I think that's dashing, but she could replace Ellen with me. I'll take her place. <laughs> I love that you use words like dashing. It's very appropriate for butch women. I like that. Yes, it is. And you're going to find a lot of English and a lot of British words is new Caribbean people's language because we, you know, we were once a colony of the British. So a lot of our idioms and figures of speech are going to be British. So that's, that's all good and true. It amazes me too because I'm like, oh, why do we use these words? And then I'm like, yeah, that's why. I think it's cool. It's a good mix. Well, we were a British colony too, so we also use words like dashing. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> and we also say words like that, darling, and all these things. <laughs> aye, aye, aye. <laughs> okay, so my last butch, and by no means the least on my list, I love her to death, is Jane from Jane's World by Paige Braddock. Now, Jane is the kind of adorable butch that is nerdy, she wears a bow tie, she's kind of awkward, um, and she's just too sweet and adorable. Okay, and this is such a funny, funny book. Man, I laughed so much when I read this book. Jane's pay buddy account gets hacked, and she inadvertently purchases a mail-order bride from Transnistria. Jane doesn't realize she's about to embark on her honeymoon until the bride, Natasha, shows up on her doorstep with luggage. Jane's roommate, Ethan, can't stop drooling over sexy Natasha. Luckily, after the demise of the local newspaper, Jane has just taken a job at the public library where she has lots of co-workers smarter than she is, and she enlists them their help to figure a way out of this accidental marriage. Natasha believes if she can get Jane to consummate the marriage, that, according to California's new state ruling on same-sex marriage, she'll be a U.S. citizen. But is that all she's really after? Or does true romance begin to bloom between Natasha and Jane? 
If Jane's part-time girlfriend, Dorothy, has anything to say about it, the answer is no. And this is a <clears throat> rollicking romp and a much, much adored book. I, I love this book. I think it's hilarious. It's a continuation, if you like, of Paige Braddock's comic book series. Wonderful. <laughs> It's wonderful. It is. It's, it's adorable. Okay. So what is your very last one? Oh, my very last one is Last But You Certainly Not Least. It is Des Ryan from Lori Ellie's Gone series, right? Now, I adore Des Ryan on all levels. She's a six-year sergeant, and she wants to get into the SWAT investigation, but it's an awfully sweet woman. She had dreams of doing all of this, but when she meets up with Jalen Savage, and she rescues him, right? Jalen Savage and her friend made a phone call one night because there was a break-in at their house. And Des Riley was the officer on call. And she came to the house. She ran off the burglars, whatever, apprehended them. And then, you know, Jalen looked up to Des and she was like, this is the kind of woman that I want to be. And this is the kind of woman I like. She's the epitome of butch women. This, this is it. And she decides, Jalen up and decides, okay, I'm going to join the police force. Much to Des Riley's amazement and horror because she's like, the police work is a dangerous work. You're so tiny. Because Jalen is a tiny character. And Des is big, strapping, six foot tall hunk of butch womanhood. See? Right? And they just swap, swap, actually be stalking by Jalen. And I'm thinking, it always sounds like she's stalking Jalen. He's stalking a woman like Des Riley. Because, I mean, Des Riley spent a lot of time on her own, you know. She's a solitary person, not in a family around. And Jalen brought laughter and love into her life. Even though Des has friends and stuff who are there for her. But Jalen brought a softness to her extra touch. And you will see throughout the Paige Gunn series, right now, there are four books in the series. And I know Lori L. Lake is about to release the fifth one. I'm patiently waiting on that. But these four books in the gun series is just amazing. It's wonderful. The last one, Jump the Gun. Amazing, amazing. Yeah, got to read Jump the Gun. Gun Shy, Under the Gun, Half Gun Wheel Travel. Awesome book, right? Get your hand on it. That is a lovely mystery thriller. Everything in one there. And romance too. I mean, for good measure, for people like me, like, she's getting the girl. She's going off with her in a flashing police car. She has the girl. <laughs> So, I just love her. I just love her. This quiet, reserved, butch woman is actually brought out of the shell of a Jalen. So, you see, butch woman is always talking about her ugliness. You know, she gets talking by us. Yes, butch women are awesome. They're tough, yet they're very vulnerable. But they're curvy. Oh my God, they're curvy. Amazing. So, butch women, we love you. <laughs> well said. <laughs> April, thank you so much for joining me today. Um, You're I welcome. <laughs> I think if anybody is looking for a great butch character, they've got 10 to choose from. Thank you for tuning in to the Lesbian Review Podcast. I'm Sheena and I've been joined today by April. You can read our book and movie reviews on thelesbianreview.com. If you enjoy this podcast and want to be part of the conversation, then come join us on our Facebook group, the Lesbian Talk Show Chat Group. Before you go, I have an urgent announcement. I need you to rate this podcast on iTunes. Because the more ratings we get, the more listeners will be able to find us. That's all for now. Bye. Bye.